Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, on Roku, Dwyer Boxing, and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Well, the NBA Finals are upon us. There is a bet on the board, and uh, you need to take bets that you see that you like before the casinos get wise, other gamblers get wise, and the line moves, right? Even though the game is more than a week away, just understand that this bet might not exist at tip-off. And the bet is the under 203.5 points, total points, for game one, right? That's the bet I like. That's the bet I'm going to push here. Let's talk about why. In the playoffs, forget the regular season, right? Let's talk about how these teams are doing right now. In the playoffs, Golden State has averaged 104.3 points per game. Remember that number. The Cleveland Cavaliers have averaged 101.4 points per game. You add those two together, you get 205.7 points right that's if they hit their averages I don't believe they will for the finals why because defensively the Cavaliers in the playoffs have only given up 92.6 points per game defensively Golden State has only given up 96.3 points per game you add 92.6 with 96.3 and you get 188.9 points per game on average that these teams' opponents collectively combine for, right? So, if you're into over-unders, understand game one likely, very charged atmosphere, right? Cleveland hasn't won anything for half a decade, excuse me, half a century, Right? This is Golden State's for first time in the NBA Finals in 40 years. Right, You can imagine Game 1 is going to have a certain level of intensity that we haven't seen for some time, apart from Game 7s in the playoffs. The range of 188.9, which is, again what their opponents average combined in a game, right? The range between 188.9 and 205.7, what these teams typically score in a playoff game. To me, that's the range for the scoring in game one, right? I believe it's going to be on the lower end of that range, not the higher end of the range. 203.5 is too close to 205.7, in my opinion, right? I'm expecting the scoring to be more in the high 190s. I like the under 203.5 uh, for game one. Now, let's also talk about this series in general, what gamblers need to think about. I want to direct your attention to yesterday's box score, Golden State's win over Houston. Now, I know the press is really talking up the Splash Brothers, right? Steph Curry, the MVP, and Klay Thompson. But what I want you to do is to look at the plus-minus on yesterday's game. And make no mistake, yesterday's game obviously was a big game for Golden State, right? It was their chance to close out Houston, right, at home. They didn't want to go back to Houston, a town that's had flooding, that has a very passionate fan base, you know, where that community is coming together and might have coalesced around the Houston Rockets, right? They didn't want to deal with a game six at Houston, right? They also didn't want to deal with the coin flip type nature of any game seven. So yesterday was a big game for them. What I want you to do is to look at the plus minus. 
right? If you're serious about your betting, you need to look at more than just how many points a player scored. Go to the box score and look at the plus minus. I believe you're going to figure out, just looking at that col column, the secret behind Golden State's success. Understand that Steph Curry yesterday, right, in scoring a very inefficient 26 points, right, he was 3 for 11 from three-point range. He was 7 for 21 from the field, right, only had a plus minus of, point, of plus one. Right, just a plus one, plus minus. Clay Thompson, who, and this is a big problem you need to keep an eye on, didn't get to the free throw line once in a playoff game at home. Right, had a plus minus of plus nine. Now, the guy on the Warriors with the highest plus minus yesterday was Sean Livingston. Remember that name. He had a plus minus of plus 16. Right? Plus 16. If you look at the Warrior bench, you're going to notice that that is the strength of the team. Festus Ezeli had a plus minus of plus 12. Right? In other words, when Festus was on the team, the team scored 10 more points. Excuse me, scored, it is early in the morning, scored 12 more points in the Houston Rockets. When Steph Curry was on the court, the Warriors only scored one more point than the Houston Rockets. Margin is everything. Andre Iguodala had a plus minus of plus 11. These are the guys who are going to be getting a lot of the playing time against the Cleveland Cavaliers. Right? Understand Sean Livingston, who adds to the bottom line more than most, scored no points yesterday. Right? None. While he's on the court, the Warriors are outscoring the opposition by 16 points yesterday. He scored none. The reason I'm bringing up this plus minus analysis is that that tells you that lower scoring guys are going to be getting significant playing time because that's where the Warriors have their competitive advantage. Let me tell you how odd it is. Right? Andrew Bogut yesterday had a higher plus minus than Steph Curry, right? Andrew Bogut, like Sean Livingston, scored no points yesterday. So the Warriors have a lot of guys who they know help them win, who aren't flashy, who don't have clever nicknames, right? Who Steve Kerr is going to have on the court at the biggest moments of the game right so I believe that right now the casual fan the casual better thinks that this is gonna be an up and down the court high scoring NBA Finals it's not right it's gonna be more of the sub 200 point variety understand yesterday's game that the Warriors played had a total of less than 200 points right this is not the regular season where you're trying to impress fans and look flashy and placate superstars right this is now the postseason where you're trying to get a parade you're trying to get a trophy you're trying to win a title so I'm expecting the games to tighten up considerably I think by the end of this series, you're going to see a hell of a lot more Sean Livingston, for example, than you expect. I think the air is going to be taken out of the basketball, right? Not in a New England type of way. We're talking about legitimately, strategically. The air is going to be taken out of the basketball. The scores are going to be lower than you expect, right? 
it's going to take Vegas a game or two, perhaps, to adjust to the actual reality on the court. Right? Let me say this, too. If, like me, you expect lower scoring games, then you should also, for game one, be wondering why the Cleveland Cavaliers are six-point underdogs. In a lower scoring affair, six points is huge. Understand, there's a lot of sharps out there, Charles Barkley among them, who believes that Cleveland's going to win this series outright. Just think about Cleveland's last four games, folks. They're four wins, right? Think about the lack of finals experience on the Golden State Warriors. This is LeBron's fifth consecutive NBA Finals, right? So the lines for game one are off, in my opinion. I like the under 203.5 total points. I like Cleveland plus six for game one, right? Why? Because Cleveland is only giving up 92.6 points per game. Understand the loss of Kevin Love has lifted the defensive intensity of the Cleveland Cavaliers. Just understand, the front court of Cleveland, Muscov, Thompson, and LeBron James, right, are vastly superior defensively to the front court of the Houston Rockets. Right? This is going to be a fundamentally different series. Right? Golden State right now is going up against a defensive juggernaut. Even if you believe that Golden State wins this series, Golden State is overpriced in the odds market in Las Vegas. Right? Understand, there's no championship pedigree here on the Golden State Warriors. This is rarefied air for them. Understand, too, that teams are catching up to their three-point shooting attack. Just look at Steph Curry's 3-4-11 yesterday. Let me also say this, too, and I say this to the old-timers, right? Back in the day, in other words, for every team other than Golden State just a month ago, if a guy hit, you know, three threes in a game, you thought he was balling. Understand, Steph Curry, in the history of the NBA, has hit the most threes in this postseason for any postseason in NBA history. In other words, Steph Curry right now is putting on a record-setting performance from the three-point line. Reggie Miller, Andrew Toney, right? uh, Dennis Scott. Uh, none of the great three-point shooters in history have done what Steph Curry has been doing. He's had games where he's hit six threes from, you know, from deep. My point to you is when you see something like that, in my opinion, I'd rather bet on gravity than a record-setting performance. Right? Guys who are going at record paces tend to revert to the mean. Do you really think that a team, the Cleveland Cavaliers, that gives up less than 93 points per game in the playoffs is going to stand around and watch Steph Curry hit six threes in a game against them in an NBA Finals? A few years ago, I saw LeBron James, D. Up, Derrick Rose, right? Keep in mind, this was Derrick before some of the recent knee problems. Rose was cat quick, lightning quick. I'm telling you, LeBron James, a much bigger player, moves so well, he shut him down. Shut him down. Now, yesterday, if you look at the film, you're going to notice that the Houston Rockets had Trevor Ariza, who's also long, like LeBron, being up Steph Curry, and it bothered him. Right? Understand, from three yesterday, Steph Curry hit less than 30% of his threes, right? 3 for 11 
Understand going into yesterday's game, Steph Curry had been hitting more than 50% of his threes in the postseason, a pace that's simply not sustainable. Now, if Trevor Ariza gave Steph Curry problems defensively, don't you think there's going to be a moment in this NBA Finals where LeBron James steps in if Steph Curry is on his way to setting more records, right? LeBron steps in to shut him down. Let me point out, too, that LeBron's not the only good defender on the Cleveland Cavaliers. I'm a Knicks fan. I can tell you Shumpert, who used to be a Knick, by the way, it's amazing how these Knicks leave the Knicks and then suddenly they're showing up in the Western Conference Finals, Prigioni, the Eastern Conference Finals, J.R. Smith, Shumpert, um, the playoffs in general, Tyson Chandler. Well, anyway, Shumpert is one of the better defenders in the entire league. Right? This isn't to this Draymond Green or Andre Iguodala, who are also excellent defenders, or Sean Livingston. My point to you is simply, the Warriors are relying on Steph Curry so much, he attempted 11 threes yesterday. If he slowed down at all, if he's actually held to less than the 50% plus that he's been hitting in the playoffs, the Warriors might look considerably different in these playoffs. Just food for thought. In any event, I like the Cavs plus six for game one. I like the under 203.5 for game one. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Let me also say, too, one of the secrets of yesterday's game, Golden State Houston, was the rebounding. It's simply insane. For Golden State to have nine more offensive rebounds than Houston. In fact, Golden State had 20 more rebounds in the game than Houston. That's absolutely insane. Do you believe that they're ever going to have a gap like that against the Cleveland Cavaliers? I don't. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Let me also say, too, that I don't think anyone is going to have the number of turnovers James Harden had yesterday. Right? A reduction in turnovers and a reduction in the rebounding gap could lead to an interesting series. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.